TYT Sports previewing the ACC tournament with ESPN's Dan Schulman. Dan, how are you today? I'm doing great. Happy to be here in Atlanta and excited for uh, four days of good basketball. It should be four days of good basketball. Um, let's start with North Carolina. It seems like they have received a ton of criticism. Personally, I think they have the best chance from an ACC team to make a deep run in the tournament. Um, what is your analysis on ACC? Do you see them taking the ACC crown and possibly having a number one seed? I would think so. I think they're the best team in the league. And now that we know that Ryan Kelly, who's an important player for Duke, is not going to play at all in this tournament because he's got a sprained ankle, I think that gives Carolina an even better chance. The one thing is, though, is Roy Williams has kind of always been upfront about it. The NCAA tournament is a bigger deal. He wants to win the ACC tournament. But if push comes to shove, uh, I'm not saying he does, you know, they're not going to try their best. They're going to try, but they're thinking about the next step as well, as all the big name programs do. So, but, but I think they're the best team here. I think they've got the best chance to win it. And if they do win the ACC tournament, I think they'll be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, though, it does depend on the likes of Michigan State and some other teams and how they do in their respective tournaments um, with, how, with what seed they could possibly get in the NCAA tournament. Um, I did want to ask you about Ryan Kelly. With him being out, how does that impact Duke? Do you, uh, I mean, what do, what do you think about them without him? I, I think it hurts them because he's a big guy who can score. And with Kelly out, the Plumlee brothers are going to play on the court together a lot. And they're both very good players, but Kelly's more of an outside guy, and both Plumleys are more inside guys, so there's not as much space down there. Mason has to move a little further away from the bucket so Miles can play down low. Uh, I think they're going to need a guy like Josh Hairston, who only gets about six or eight minutes a game for them to play some minutes. And Duke, I think, will, will have to go small at times without having Ryan Kelly in there. So he's a key player for them. He's a, you know, a, a four-man who can stretch the floor. He shoots 40% from three. He's a very good player. And uh, there are a lot of guys who are injured right now in this league, but I think Ryan Kelly's in injury is a very significant one. You know, we have a Florida State alum who is uh, pretty interested in the basketball program. He will be watching the tournament uh, live from TYT Rebel headquarters. Let me ask you about them. Uh, what chance do you give them? Obviously, everyone has a chance. That's a given. But what chance do you give them to win this thing? Well, I, I think they're a threat. I mean, as your friend knows, they beat North Carolina by 33 points earlier this season. They also beat Duke at Duke this year. So those are two great wins for Florida State, who come into this tournament clearly as the biggest threat to the North Carolina Duke supremacy that we've seen for so many years in the ACC. Um, the Leonard Hamilton's team is well coached. They're great defensively, they're very experienced, and they're deep. They've got a lot going for them. The question for them is, can they put the ball in the basket? Sometimes they just have droughts where they can't score very well. But uh, I think they're hungry. I think they want respect. I think they want notoriety. I think they want attention. And I think they want this tournament very badly. And, and uh, they're going to, I think they're going to play with a lot of confidence. Assuming they win their quarterfinal game, they would likely play Duke in the semifinal. And again, they've won at Duke this year. So uh, I think Florida State's got a shot. Let's do a little uh, back and forth hypothetical here. and Just a few more questions for you. Uh, if they win their quarterfinal and lose to Duke, what seed do you think they would have? Uh, I think Florida State, if they win their quarterfinal and lose to Duke, probably would be somewhere around a five or, or a six seed, somewhere like that. They, they've had a solid season. And, I mean, they're solidly in the tournament. That's not, a, that's not uh, up for debate. But I think Florida State would be in the five or six range. And if they can go deeper into the ACC tournament, they might be able to get up as high as a four. Okay. Wanted to ask you about that as well. Um, tell me about the bubble teams. I mean, Miami is certainly on there. Uh, Virginia arguably can easily be on that list as well. Um, do you see either of them getting in, and how do you think they will play out in the tournament? I think Virginia's in right now. I mean, if you look at the bubble, you know, again, we've gone up to 68 teams. We went from 64 to 65 to 68 over the last few years, so the bubble's getting a little bit weaker every year. I think Virginia's done enough to get in. Uh, I think the two teams that are on the bubble in this tournament are Miami, as you mentioned, and North Carolina State. And I'm not sure either one of them is in right now. And I'm not sure winning their first round game is enough to get them in because they're going to be beating a bad team um, to, just to get to the quarterfinals. North Carolina State has not beaten a single team this year that you would expect to qualify for the NCAA tournament. They've beaten the bad teams. They have not beaten the good teams. 
And I think they've got to do it. I think they've got to beat Boston College today. And then I think they've probably got to beat Virginia in the quarterfinal. And I would feel the same about Miami. I think they might need to win their quarterfinal game. The interesting thing is, is that North Carolina State has beaten Miami twice. But Miami might have a stronger overall resume than North Carolina State. So if it came down to those two teams, which one would go in? And, and that's why I expect to see both the Hurricanes and the Wolfpack playing like there's no tomorrow. Because for them, there may not be. As many on the program know, I went to Indiana University. I will always remember NC State being that first big win of the year when Indiana went into their house and beat them. Maybe a season-turning uh, win, you could say, even though it was in the very beginning with the Big Ten ACC tournament. Uh, give me one sleeper pick that you have. In the ACC? Yes. Uh, I would say, boy, boy, um, I would say Miami. I, I, I think Miami's hungry. I think they're talented. I think they've got a pretty good draw as the sixth seed. They can avoid North Carolina. They're on the other side of the bracket. So um, given their, their talent and their experience and what they're playing for right now, I would say Miami's a team that could probably scare some people and win a couple of games here. Last question for you, Dan. You know, it seems to be that Duke and Carolina will have that bitter rivalry once again in the final of the ACC tournament. Uh, I truly think that's what it will be. Florida State can, uh, can, you know, they can easily get into the final. However, with Duke and Carolina, it is the marquee matchup that everyone wants to see. Do you think we will see that? And who do you have winning the tournament in the end? I think we will see it, but again, without Ryan Kelly, I think Duke is at risk. And I think Florida State, they're the three seed, Duke's the two, so they would match up in the semifinals. I think Florida State's got an even money chance of winning that game. I really do. Um, so I'm not sure who we're going to see. I think Carolina will get through. I'd be very surprised if Carolina doesn't get through to the final. And regardless of who does, I think Carolina's going to win it. I, I think right now they're playing well. Uh, their confidence is really good. And I think they're playing a little tougher than they were earlier in the season. They've shown some fight and some determination and some tough games and, and found a way to win on the road and so forth. So uh, I think Carolina wins this tournament and I think they get a one seed. Uh, and then I think Duke probably winds up with a two seed in the NCAA tournament in Florida State, depending on how far they get, probably somewhere around a five. Very last question for you. One that just came to me about Kendall Marshall. I know that your colleague ESPN, Jay Billis, had a tweet that went out that was retweeted by the masses, it appeared to be, that Kendall Marshall was very deserving of being a first-team ACC player and was apparently left off that list. Uh, do you have a take on that? Was he deserving? I, I think so. Uh, three of his teammates made it, and, and they only picked five guys, and, and all three of the front court guys, Zeller, Barnes, and Henson, all made it. Uh, Marshall finished sixth in the voting, so he was the top vote-getter on the second uh, All-ACC team. Uh, not to take anything away from any of the guys who were on the first team, but Marshall deserved to be there. When you're second in the country in assists, when you're averaging almost 10 assists per game, you are good enough to be first team all conference in your own league. And, and I bet you that Zeller, Henson and Barnes would all tell you that Marshall should have been on the first team. I, I don't know who they should have left off, whether it was one of the Carolina guys. The other two were Austin Rivers from Duke and then Mike Scott from Virginia. My, my hunch would be to leave off Scott from Virginia, put him on the second team as good a player as he is. I, I thought Kendall Marshall was uh, was terrific, was sensational this year. I mean, I mean, having seen a lot of their games and done a lot of their games, 10 assists per game is, is a ridiculous total uh, at, at the college level. And, and I certainly think he should have been there. I think some people just thought it didn't look good to have four Carolina guys on the on the top team, maybe. But but I think Marshall should have been there. I completely agree with you. He had he is a true floor general in every every sense of the term. Uh, and I, I truly believe that he'll make it at the next level. But hey, that's just me. Uh, Dan Shulman of ESPN. Thank you so much for the time, as always. I really, really appreciate it. All right, Rick, thanks. Good luck to your Hoosiers.